Hi, I'm Angela from CraftyGoat.com and today I'm going to show you how to heat emboss on polymer clay. Now for those of you who might not be familiar with heat embossing in general, the basic idea is that you use a pigment ink, which is a slow drying type of ink, on your stamp to stamp the image and then you sprinkle uh, embossing powders and it sticks where that wet ink is. You hit it with a heat gun and the embossing powders raise up and give it a nice texture. Now heat embossing on polymer clay is basically the same idea, but there's a couple of extra things to keep in mind and today I'll talk about what those are. Here's what you'll need for this project. Polymer clay, a rubber stamp and some pigment ink, embossing powder, and a heat gun. The first step is to roll out your polymer clay to a nice thin sheet and then cut it down to whatever size you want. I'm going to use a cookie cutter, but you could use a template or just um, cut it by hand. Now for the most part, you want to always emboss with baked polymer clay. Uh, there is one exception, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But if you use unbaked clay, then the embossing powders are going to stick everywhere, not just where the stamped image is. So I'm going to go ahead and use a baked sheet. This is one that I baked earlier. And the first thing that I'm going to do is use my uh, pigment ink and ink my stamp. Now this is a clear embossing ink. The nice thing about that is um, I can use it with any color of embossing powder and it's not going to show through. It's hard to tell on camera, but that is uh, stamped. Now you kind of want to work quickly once you've stamped that. so that the ink is still nice and wet. I'm putting it on a scrap piece of paper so that I can pour my embossing powder. You want to pour it pretty liberally. Um, since you're using this scrap piece of paper, you're not going to waste any. You can just pour it back into the bottle. And once it's good and covered, you can start removing the excess ink and do that a couple of different ways. You can tap it off like that. Um, sometimes I'll blow on it. Or you can use like a small paintbrush to wipe off extra if you have some around the edges. Once you're happy with your stamped image, it's time to get the heat gun out. Now, if you're using a small piece like this, probably a good idea to put it on a tile or something so you don't burn your fingers. And I actually put a little double sticky tape here so that it keeps it in place. It doesn't blow around the clay while I'm using the heat gun. And the way you use the heat gun is you're going to put it about uh, an inch or two above the polymer clay and keep it moving at all times. And probably at about 10 or 15 seconds you're going to start seeing the powders change, they'll get shiny, they'll be raised and look a little bit different. Um, whenever all the powders have changed, then you're done. The only things extra to keep in mind when you're using it with polymer clay is you can burn the clay, so keep it moving, don't keep it in one spot for too long, and uh, don't get it too close to the clay. Don't go more than uh, about an inch away. Here's what it looks like when it's done. Now if you wanted to add a little embossed border around the edges, here's one way to do that. Um, I've spread some liquid clay all around the edges of this piece. 
And this is just a snake that I rolled out on my extruder. I'm going to put that around. And it will stick to the liquid clay. Now I'm going to use my embossing powder. And since that snake around the edge is raw clay, it's going to stick completely to that, but it won't stick to the inner part which is already baked. Just roll that there. Until the edges are covered, and then you'll emboss it with the heat gun, just like we did before. Since that outside is unbaked clay, you will want to go ahead and bake it for the normal uh, recommended time for the clay brand that you're using. But that gives you a neat way to add a little border around any piece that you've embossed. Now there's a lot of different embossing powders and stamps available, so you can get a lot of neat effects with this technique. Uh, and then you can use your embossed pieces for jewelry or home decor or a lot of different things. I hope you enjoy playing with this technique. For more information on stamping polymer clay or other polymer clay tips and tricks, check out my blog at blog.craftygoat.com. Thanks!